I'm going to show you how I use my Polaroid SX70 to take long exposure night shots. Last winter here in Brisbane, I shot quite a few packs of Polaroid Integral film through my SX70, 600 series and iType cameras. I shot in the late afternoon and early evening and I think I got some pretty good results. So there's four basic things you need to shoot SX70 Polaroids at night. The first thing you're going to need is an SX70, here is mine here. The second thing you're going to need is a tripod. I have an old Manfrotto tripod, it's about 15 years old. I think it was quite expensive at the time, it was about 150 pounds when I lived in England, but it's been worth every penny. I have used and abused this tripod for years and it's still going. The third and fourth things you'll need you might have to source if you don't already have them and if you need them. So the third thing is a tripod adapter. Now my SX70 here is one of the early models and it doesn't have a tripod socket here. So I need to get this tripod adapter from the Polaroid SX70 accessory kit that was released in the 70s and I need to put this on the base here before I can put it on a tripod. Now if you do have a later SX70 you will find a tripod socket there and you don't need that item. And the final thing you'll need is a Polaroid shutter release cable. So this also came in the Polaroid SX70 accessory kit. It has two little prongs there and you just simply slide them into the side of the Polaroid SX70 and when you want to take an exposure you press the big red button. It's a really cool accessory, it also works with the later Polaroid SLR680 camera. So it's definitely worth getting one if you want to take some long exposure Polaroids. Now once you've got all that kit together the next step is to find somewhere cool to shoot. So I like shooting in the late afternoon, early evening and I like to get a scene where there's a mix of natural light and also artificial light. So shops and cars and trains, you know, moving lights are really cool because you can get some traffic trails and train trails. And if you've got the natural light there of the sunset or the glow of the sunset coming in as well, the images look really nice. So that's the kind of scene that I try and look for. So if you've got all your items, you've found a scene that you want to take a photograph of, the rest is pretty easy. You just carefully mount your SX70 to the tripod accessory and then onto your tripod. You make sure you have a nice composition looking through the viewfinder there. You focus your SX70 and press the shutter. That's it. So now let's take a look at some of the images I shot on Friday night. So I've got my little stack of Polaroids here. I absolutely love having a little stack of Polaroids. There's nothing better in your hand than some of these images just to look through. It's an absolutely fantastic feeling. So this first one here is really cool. I really love the colors. So you, here you've got the beautiful colors of the sunset there. You've got these beautiful yellows and pinks and orange sort of colors. It looks absolutely fantastic. And you've just sort of got the glow of the light to the train station and the sort of silhouettes of some of the buildings there. I think there is a train, yeah there is definitely a train going past there on the left, you can sort of see some lights, but the train lights aren't sort of uh, you know, that impressive in this image, but I still really like that, mainly because of the mix there of the, the natural light and the artificial lights. Now this next image I actually moved place to near the level crossing, and you've got a really cool image here, you've got these two warning lights of the level crossing, telling people not to, to drive over, not to cross the road because they're going to get hit by a train. Now those two big lights there on the left, they flash one after another, so they don't flash at the same time. But because this is a long exposure, they're both lit up there, which is really cool. And you also see that white light through the bottom of the frame, that is the train going past. This next one is very similar, however, the lights of the train are a little bit more pronounced. I can't remember what was happening here, I think perhaps that is the same train, but that is when it sped up and it was going a bit faster, but you've got the nice, really nice white sort of blur of those lights coming in a lot stronger. And again, you've got those two warning lights of the level crossing, both flashing there at the same time. The third one here in the same location is probably my favorite. It's actually before the train came. And so there's actually these boom gates that come down when the lights start flashing. And you can actually see the red lights there sort of going down the side or the right hand side of the image. That's actually the boom gate lowering. And because this was probably a six or seven second exposure, I've got the, the two flashing lights there, both in the image and also the boom gate lights coming down. I really love that. I really love the glow in the background. They're really, you know, pink, yellow, orange kind of background. I think it looks absolutely fantastic. This next one, I did keep shooting. However, it's looking a bit dark at this stage. So again, this is the level crossing. This is a train going past. This was a bit of a longer exposure because there was, wasn't much natural light anymore. 
Look, it's a cool image. However, when I looked at this image afterwards, I thought, gee, I wish I'd stopped shooting there and I wish I'd gone somewhere else. But hey, you live and learn. And when you uh, live and learn with Polaroids, it's a bit of an expensive exercise. This next one is a close up of those flashing warning lights. I do like this image. I think it looks cool. But again, it's, it's kind of more of the same. This one is quite an interesting image. This was towards the end of when I was shooting on Friday night and looking down the line to, to the south, there's this big stretch of railway line where there's no lights at all. And I started taking this exposure when it was completely dark and then this train went past and you get this really nice blur of this train, the train lights, the white lights and the red lights go through. So yeah, it's an interesting image. It's very minimalist. There's not much there except the black darkness, inkiness of night and that white train, white and red train lights going through the image. By this stage, I was trying to think of alternate compositions at the same location because the light was rapidly fading. I turned around and faced the other way and I got the level crossing here where I've got the cars here. The cars are on the other side of the train tracks and I waited until the train was almost coming past. So I've got the train lights and the shop lights in the background there and then the train came through through the second half of the exposure. Look, I like this, but I don't think it's as impressive as other photos. And that's the thing about night photography. Sometimes you do have to sort of play around with settings, play around with compositions and see what works and what doesn't work. The last two images I took on Friday night, I really love. So if you've watched my other videos, you might, you might recognize this shop. This is like a framing shop, like a picture framing shop. And this is right by the railway line. And I thought, I'm just gonna set my tripod up here and take a long exposure of this shop. I think it looks really great. You know, we've got some artificial lighting there, lighting the shop up. I think it looks really cool. And I think I'll definitely do some more images like this in the future. And the last one is again a repeat offender from the Matt Loves Cameras video reels. Uh, this is the Gumsing Chinese restaurant. And uh, look, I really like this one. I've sort of photographed this from across the road. And look, it's quite dark and you've got the, the bright lights there of the fluoro lights outside the shop. If you look in the bottom of the frame, there's actually some cars go past and you can just faintly see at the very bottom of the frame, you can see some red and white lights of cars going through. I do like that image. I think for this one, because it was dark, I actually turned the light and darken wheel all the way up to light. So you can see that those uh, fluorescent lights do look pretty bright and that was probably my fault telling the camera to take the image for a bit longer. But yeah, I quite like it, it looks cool. So I've got a few more images to talk about, but I've got a favor to ask first. If you're enjoying this video, please give it a thumbs up and leave a comment. And if that subscribe button down below is still red, I would love it if you subscribe to my channel. So here are the four Polaroids I took on Saturday night. I took these in Cleveland, not far from where I live. And the first one here I really kind of like. You've got this beautiful glow of the sunset again. It's sort of more pale yellows and pinks and purples this time. It's really nice. And I took this on a main road and there's these traffic lights. You know, the red lights are going away from me and the white lights are coming towards me. I do really like it, but I kind of felt at the time when I pressed the shutter button that I didn't get enough cars in. So I actually stood there and took a few more. So this is probably the best one that I took. I think I took three in total. And you can see there that there's a lot of sort of red lights and a lot of white lights, you know, going away and coming towards me. I really like this. I think it looks really cool. And you've got all these, sort of the image there and the road is sort of framed by all these sort of eucalyptus gum trees there. So I think it looks fantastic and I really love this. I then headed down to Raby Bay where I've taken quite a few photos uh, for videos on this channel. And I took this beautiful image here of the boats on one of the canals sort of looking vaguely to the north. And again, you've got this beautiful sort of purple, pink, yellow sunset and it's reflected in the water and you've got some reflections there of trees and buildings and boats. I think it's a really nice image. Now there's some people who really don't like SX-70 film, or Polaroid films in general. They say that the colors aren't good and all that kind of stuff and they kind of criticize Polaroid. I think the colors of the film are absolutely fantastic. But there's one thing that, uh, there's a few things that I'm not too keen on and that is the consistency of the film. So all the rest of the film in this pack I was shooting was fine, but have a look at this. See that little thing there on the right, top right hand side? I don't know what that is. That just randomly happens on some Polaroid images. Now I've posted this in groups before. People have said to me, oh that's where you put your thumb on, where you've grabbed the image and pulled it out. That's just not true. I don't grab images like that. I take them very carefully when they eject and I put them very carefully in my pocket. And yet some of, quite a few of my images have this little mark on and I don't know what it is. 
So like I'm really glad that Polaroid is still producing film. I think the colors of the latest XX70 film look fantastic. It's just some of these consistency issues. It must be a very tricky job trying to, to keep everything consistent, but I'm, I'm not sure what the answer is, but I hope the film just gets a little bit more consistent with its look in the future. And the final image, okay, I left the worst image for last. This is an image, it was completely dark. These are the restaurants at Raby Bay. I thought, you know, I'm gonna take this long exposure here of the restaurants and see what it's like. It turned out pretty rubbish, actually. It was just too dark, you know, too dark to take the image here. So you have got the lights there. You can sort of vaguely sort of see people in the restaurants there. But by this stage, it was almost pitch black dark. I wanted to use the pack up and finish it off. But yeah, it was a bit of a mistake, a bit of a waste. But hey, like I said, you live and learn, right? So if you're wondering why I shoot SX70 film at night and not 600 series film or I-type film, well, there's a very easy, very short explanation. If you're shooting with SX70 film, it's ISO 160, as opposed to the ISO 640 film that is I-type and 600 series film. Basically what all that means is that you're gonna get longer exposure times with SX70 film. It's not as sensitive to light, and when you press the shutter, the camera's gotta work out how long the exposure's gonna go for with that beautiful F8 lens. And with SX70 film, it's gonna go for longer. So at dusk, with those nice light trails and the nice sort of, sort of sunset colors in the background, typically I'll get anywhere from four to 10 second exposures, which is perfect. If I use Polaroid 600 series film, say, in my SLR 680, the shutter speeds would be a lot less. So for example, just say the shutter speed was eight seconds with SX70 film, because of the there's two stops difference, the same shutter speed, everything being equal, would be about two seconds with my 600 series cameras. So for me, that isn't long enough to capture things like light trails and moving trains and cars. It might work for you, but for the night shots I do, it doesn't work as well in my opinion. So there you go, there are some of my long exposure, dusk and early evening images from Friday and Saturday night. Tell me what you think in the comments. I would love to hear your thoughts. Do you shoot SX70 at night? Do you shoot Polaroid 600 film at night? Let me know in the comments. Make sure you give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. See you next time.